is a slider crank mechanism analysis and animation synthesis of a four bar mechanism. I'm Mikhail Motive. I'm Kevin Alvarez. I'm Joseph Hernandez. In this PowerPoint, we will have an introduction, a problem statement, an initial slider crank kinematic study, an application of that slider crank, uh, a video of that application. We'll see a four bar synthesis, four bar mechanism application, uh, and a video of that application. Finally, a conclusion. In the early 1940s, European and American kinematicians consolidated their findings to de help develop planar mechanics synthesis. <clears throat> Some of the tools we used to, to, for this project were Excel to calculate all our unknowns and SOLIDWORKS to model uh, our systems. The difference between a four bar mechanism and a slider crank mechanism is that the four bar mechanism has an R1 that's fixed. The slider crank mechanism as a R1 that's time dependent. We were tasked to uh, synthesize a four bar mechanism com with completely, and for a slider crank, we, we were to find uh, an R1 and a theta three. We also needed to find uh, ver uh, unknown velocities and accelerations. Here is our kinematic analysis of the slider crank. Our inputs are given on the left hand side as R2, R3, R4, theta 1, theta 2, theta 4, omega 2, alpha 2, QS, the distance to a point on the coupler link, and theta 5, which is the angle of which the point is at. We had to solve for R1, which is a function of time, theta 3, which is also a function of time, YS versus XS, which is a position of the point on the coupler link omega-3, omega-4, alpha-3, and alpha-4. The blue line shows closure one, and the red line shows closure two for the slider crank. The application we chose to, for our slider crank is a bottling, in a bottling factory. We chose to have the mechanism grab a bottle cap and place it onto a beer bottle. Um, on the top left, it shows the approach towards the beer bottle with an adapter at the top that has a, a vacuum sealed section that holds the cap, collects it, retrieves it from an area and places it onto the bottle cap shown on the left hand side. Here's the actual environment that it would be in, like a bottling factory. Um, this is the adapter I was talking about. It would be sealed, stuck onto the bottom with, with a vacuum and then placed onto and press fitted onto the beer bottle itself. This is a video of the entire full cycle system. It, the trace path shows the actual path of that point where the adapter would be. And for our application, we chose only half the top of the, the trace path. This shows the actual application with the beer bottle and the cap. Um, here we, you can see that it only takes half the rotation and comes back to the initial point to collect another cap, puts it back on to another beer bottle, a beer bottle would come through again and you put another cap on. This is the same thing but in the actual environment, it shows the application with half cycle motion again and the adapter retrieves the cap, places it onto the beer bottle and the next beer bottle can go and continue. Okay. So for the four bar synthesis, we were given three different positions for the coupler. And this, the positions were here, A1, B1, A2, B2, A3, B3. We were given theta two as our input. So the first thing that we had to solve for was the actual anchor points of this four bar system. We solved that using different equations and we plugged it all into Excel. Once we have all our equations and we have all our R's, which are the links, R1, R2, R3, and R4, we found out what was the angle between them. As part of our project, we were tasked to make sure that our system went through these points. And as you can see from our Excel files, they did actually go through those points. So the four bar synthesis was completed in a, in a way that 
everything is done in 360 degrees of iterations in Excel. So in our report, you will find all the entire 360 degrees and the different data, the different uh, positions of every point of these different R's. For our real world application, we chose to do something very similar to a bike suspension. So if you see, this is a bicycle. This is a standard bicycle. They have what's, what they call a suspension in the back, tied to a damper, to process that, that hit from the back end to the mainframe of the, of the bicycle. Our four bar mechanism closely resembles that back end of the bicycle. So what we had to do was in order to make it into a real world application, we had to basically adjust our sizes of our bars because the ones that we had were way too small to, to do this purpose. So we ended up doing something like this, which is actually the same thing that you see here. And you see the damper as well as this sample bicycle. On our four bar, you can see that on this case, R1 is fixed. Here, this is our R1. So basically we rotated the whole system about 80 degrees in order to do so. This is a type one double crank system because it follows Grasshoff's inequality. Also, when we decided to do this, we had to have some practicality. So if you can show me the next video, you'll see how a double crank system never is never held up. It doesn't have a point where it stops moving because both rockers, both cranks, I'm sorry, are constantly moving in 360 degrees. But for our system, we didn't need that. We only needed the thing to move a very few amount of degrees. So we adapted a damper that went to the mainframe of the bicycle. And then you can actually see that if you're going over a bump, the rear wheel would actually come up and come back down. And there you have it. So this actually shows a trace tap of how much clearance you would have in between the rock or whatever you're trying to get over with this system. So in conclusion, we learned about slider crank mechanisms. We learned about four bar mechanisms. And we actually had to use a lot of our ingenuity to come up with different ways to apply this to the real world. Slider crank, we had to actually use half the cycle motion as we mentioned earlier. We slowed the input angular velocity of the input crank to slow it down so it, you could see it in the animation better. Our four bar mechanism, we put partial cycle motion as well. We only put a few degrees instead of the full 360. And lastly, we changed the link lengths of the actual, of all four links to match the bike rather than the initial problem. Right, so one of the biggest lessons that we learned was that taking a simple sketch, it doesn't go transfer easily to the real world. So what we had to do was sit around and think about where could we apply these mechanisms, how we can change them in order to fit our needs, and definitely do a lot of calculation. Um, Excel is a great tool, but you need to be able to put your, yourself into it and write the actual code that you need to calculate these things. So that was really the biggest lesson that we learned, to, to use the software in our advantage. But thank you for your time. Thank you.